Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Instant Impact Podcast. I'm your host, Elise, and I am doing a solo episode for you today all about LinkedIn mastery. And I tell you what, um, depending on the time at which you are listening to this, if you are listening to it as it comes out in real time, we are in the midst of just a lot of changes in the way we do business due to coronavirus, COVID-19, um, people working from home, not getting together and networking in person. And I'm really working to make my content for you right now a mix of both inspiration and mindset, and then also the tactical nitty gritty. Because at the end of the day, the way you're going to succeed right now is by making shifts and pivots to how you do business. And if you have not fully maximized yet the power of LinkedIn and the networking that's available there and the new relationships and the content marketing and the um, just business building capability that's there, this would very likely be a great time for you to decide to go all in on that and to really take advantage of what's at hand for you with this platform. And so what I wanted to do is actually share with you uh, this is it really inspired by a training that I did for my magnetic video confidence and lead generation students recently uh, called Social Media Superstar, and it was all about LinkedIn. And um, so I'm actually taking a lot of the same content that I taught them, and I'm going to repurpose and share it with you on the podcast. So just know um, you are getting a lot of value here. This is, kind of, I would say it's kind of like a masterclass, like a mini workshop. Um, and the students who are in that group are paying thousands of dollars to be in that group. And so I'm sharing with you this training because I think it's really relevant to you today. Um, if you are looking to kind of transition and pivot how you do business, get more leads online and build your brand online as well. And so to go along with the podcast today, I've actually created a free workbook for you. It's a, um, it's the workbook that I used for this training for my students originally, but I'm giving it to you for free and I am going to be going through it as we do the training. So it's probably going to be easiest for you to follow along if you have the workbook with you, but you don't have to, you can still listen, um, and go back and get it, but you can get that free workbook at elisearcher.com slash LinkedIn. So again, that's elisearcher.com slash LinkedIn. You can get the workbook that goes along with this training. And uh, for those of you who are watching the video, I'm actually going to be doing a screen share of this, but you will want to get the workbook as well uh, so that you can have it to go back and reference. So with that, uh, let's get into it. So we're really going to be talking about, I would say, three different buckets, three different types, or let's say three different buckets of how you can use LinkedIn today to build your brand and grow your business. And the first is we're going to be looking at what is the ideal optimized LinkedIn profile. The second is we're going to be looking at what sort of content marketing is working best on LinkedIn to build your brand and drive, um, drive new leads and business. And then the third is we're going to be talking engagement strategy. So how do you use LinkedIn to actually generate consistent inbound leads and grow your business. So I am, for those of you who are watching the video training, I just hit share so you can see the workbook that we're going to be going through. Let me see if I can make that a little smaller for you. And by the way, I know most of you listen to, oh my goodness, my mic is actually like falling off of my desk right now. Hold on one second. We're going to pause the recording here and we are going to get this uh, we're going to get this fixed. One moment, guys. Let me, uh, well, I think we're going to get it fixed. Uh, let's see if we can pause. There we go. All right, guys. So I, uh, yeah, I looked down while I was recording this and my mic was literally just dangling off the side of my desk. <laughs> so um, hopefully the audio in that last segment, you still heard me okay. So with that being said, um, what I was saying is, I know a lot of you listen to this on audio and that's typically how I assume you're listening to it. However, if you want to get the video, because I do video interviews, you can always go to my website, elisearcher.com slash podcast, or you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, if you search Elise Archer, you'll find it there and you can get the video version of any of these um, interviews or recordings. So with that, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk with you about is how do you create an ideal optimized LinkedIn profile? And the, the goal behind this is you really want to be found by your ideal clients. You want to be searchable because a lot of people will use LinkedIn as a search engine to search for, um, you know, sales coach, insurance agent, uh, realtor, whatever it is, you want to be found when your ideal clients are searching for those terms. And you also want to make a really great impression when they do find you. So we're going to go kind of step-by-step step here through your LinkedIn profile. 
and what you need to do to make a great first impression. The first thing to think about is what's your cover image? What does your cover image say about you? And with your cover image, it's that banner that goes behind, um, kind of behind your profile picture. It's at the very top of your page. It's like a little billboard and it's really great advertising space where you can further promote a program you have, an offering you have, you can show you in action. Maybe you're on stage, maybe you're doing your podcast, um, you know, maybe you're working with clients, but I would always have an image there that relates to you and your brand. Um, as brief as you can be with text, you want to make sure you have an attention grabbing headline. Um, and then your tagline, you could put that in there too. Like, what you do and who you do it for. You could do a call to action. In general, putting links in your cover images, at least I know this is the case on Facebook, they actually ding you for that. So if you have a link that links out to like a training or something, you can get penalized. So I, I wouldn't necessarily put a link in your cover image. I don't know if that's the case for LinkedIn that you would be penalized as well. But what I would do is I would think about what are you promoting um, what are you like what are you doing right now that you can share for example one of the things that we've done recently is started a regular schedule of live videos on tuesdays and wednesdays so tuesday at 11 30 i go live on instagram and facebook wednesday at 11 30 i go live on linkedin and so my cover images for both facebook and linkedin promote this weekly live to let people know, hey, here's how you can join me. Here's what it's about. Because I want to get more people on their live, right? I want to talk to people. I want to engage. I want to get to know them better. So that's been a really good use of the cover image um, for us. And maybe you consider doing something similar. You know, something else to think about is using relevant keywords for your profile. And in the workbook, I have a link that you can use to see what you're actually showing up for right now. So what searches you're showing up for to see what keywords you're currently being optimized for. And then you want to think about, okay, are these the search terms I want to show up for or are they not? Because each part of your LinkedIn profile, whether it's the summary section, whether it's your individual experience section, that's an opportunity for you to really to use uh, search engine optimization, which is essentially just putting in relevant keywords so that your profile is more likely to be pulled and to, um, to be searched. So the way I did this is I just made a list of what are all the keywords that I would like to show up for. And then I made sure that they were sprinkled and peppered throughout the content on my LinkedIn page. Another thing to be thinking about is using what's called rich media throughout your profile. So that can be videos, webinars, uh, you can put those under each individual experience section. You can put those on your about section, but using rich media that showcases who you are. Um, one of the things I love doing and recommend for my clients is having, you know, a welcome video and about video that's about them. When someone lands on their LinkedIn profile, it's something you can shoot in your office. You can do it on your phone. It doesn't have to be highly edited, but something that lets us know who you are, what you're all about and what we can expect from you there. Um, this is a newer feature as of the time of this recording. But if it's available to you, using the open for business feature on LinkedIn. So you may have seen, um, gosh, it's been a while since I set this up. So I'm trying to remember exactly how it looked. But I remember I had a basically a pop up on my LinkedIn page one day that said, do you want to set up this new feature? And it was called open for business. And basically it allows you to add certain business information to the top of your profile. So you can select your business focus, the services that you offer. Um, you can check box, you can check a box if you're able to work remotely. And so set that up as soon as that's available to you because anything new that LinkedIn or any social platform rolls out, you're typically going to be rewarded if you're an early adopter. Um, another thing to be thinking about is your skills and endorsements. Make sure that they are current. Right now, LinkedIn gives you a limit of 50 different skills that you can include on your profile. So some of them, if they're old and they no longer apply, delete them to make room for the new ones. Um, if your headshot isn't current, go ahead and delete that. Another thing to be thinking about is, well, delete it and then get a new one. All right, that's what I meant to say. So make sure that your headshot is current, I would say within the past couple of years max, um, so that people recognize you when they meet you. And then also think about joining relevant groups. So you can just search in the upper left-hand corner search bar of LinkedIn for groups and type in keywords that are relevant to you, your industry, your customer's industry, and start networking and getting involved in those groups so that you can start to build relationships there. 
Here's another hack for you. So your headline on LinkedIn, if you create it on a desktop, uh, the max that it gives you is 120 characters, which should work fine. And it's worked fine for me for many years. But I discovered a hack recently that if you create your headline on a mobile device, so if you use the LinkedIn app to update your headline, it actually gives you up to 220 characters. Now your headline, like the rest of your profile, is where you wanna be thinking about the keywords that you wanna show up for. So for me, I wanna be showing up for things like video coach, uh, personal branding, podcast. Uh, I was showing up for speaker, and now I'm showing up more for virtual trainer just because of the times. <laughs> but I wanna have space to show up for the search terms that are relevant. And if you set it up on your, um, on your mobile app, it'll give you more space to do so. Now, the thing to keep in mind is you then have to make updates to your profile on your mobile app. Otherwise, it, uh, if you try to update the profile on a desktop, you'll get an error message that your headline is too long. So just kind of keep that in mind as you do it. But to me, it's really worth it to have extra space for those keywords. Another thing, claim your personal URL. The default URL that you get when you set up your LinkedIn profile is probably not pretty and it's not well branded. If you uh, go back and get in your workbook that's with this training, again, just elisearcher.com slash LinkedIn and I'll show you how to get that personal URL. But you want something that's like, for me, it's linkedin.com slash Elise Archer, right? It's super easy to direct people to. You want to make sure that your URL is your name. Um, Third thing, complete and update all of your contact information. So LinkedIn gives you the ability to link to three different uh, websites on your profile. Even if you just have one website, link to the three most relevant pages on your site. So for me, I link to my company website, uh, actually two different company websites that we have. And then I also link to my private Facebook group, Visible Leaders, because I want to be getting people in there and nurturing them that way. In terms of your different sections of your profile, um, with your headline, make sure that it's meaningful and attention grabbing. You typically don't wanna just do your job title. A good formula can be what you do, who you do it for, and the benefits that they gain. So that's just a simple hack for your headline. And then in terms of your about section, use that to tell your story and then also to connect with potential customers. So you can talk about your career, your skills, please don't write in the third person. That feels so impersonal, right? As you, we know it's you who wrote it. Uh, you can talk about, you know, points of distinction, differentiation. You can add in a call to action. I would definitely include a call to action in the about section of your profile. So what do you want people to do as a result of finding you? Do you want to book them to, uh, or do you want to direct them to a free lead magnet, like an ebook? Do you want to direct them to book a call with you? And if so, put the link where they can book the call with you. Also be using media in the about section. So going back to that rich media and the importance of that, think about including images, videos, documents, um, et cetera, and update it as often as you have something new to share. So a lot of times people will ask, you know, how often should I be updating my profile or my about section? It's really as often as you have something new that's relevant of including in there. And then in terms of your experience sections, make sure that all experience sections, which is like your job experience listed underneath your about section, make sure those are all complete and relevant. Um, and there's more direction for you in the workbook on how to fill those out. With your accomplishments section, you wanna fill that out, add in, think back to you know courses you've taken, honors and awards you've received, organizations you've been a part of. Um, make sure that those are full because a lot of times you may have had a course that you took or a program that you took and you totally forgot to add it onto your profile. Well, you want to show people that you're doing continuing education and personal development and maximize that space um, by making sure that it's current. Finally, actually not finally, but second to last, I think here, get as many recommendations as you can. So I learned this trick from uh, Scott Aaron, who I had on the podcast not too long ago, who is also a LinkedIn coach. And one of his tips that he gave, which I thought was great, was downloading a list of all of your LinkedIn connections and then going through and highlighting the ones that you want to ask for a recommendation from. And so there's the instructions in the workbook of how to do that, um, how to download that list, but literally just go through and highlight who are all the people 
that I want to ask for a recommendation from and go in and ask them. And I tell you what, a great way to get recommendations is to give recommendations. So I would also be thinking about how you can give more recommendations um, to the people in your network. But if you don't ask, you shall not get. And as many recommendations as you can get, uh, the more credible and the more social proof people are going to see with you. Finally, set a monthly reminder on your calendar to update your profile and keep it fresh. So I would just have a monthly reminder like, hey, check, do I need to update my LinkedIn? If so, do it. If not, you delete the reminder and you are done. All right, so second category I wanna talk with you about here is your content strategy. Specifically, the four types of content that are working best on LinkedIn right now and how to maximize them. All right, I had to do a quick water break there. So your first type of content is a text only post. So what we're talking about here are when you go to create an update on LinkedIn and it shares it with your network, that's what we're talking about. So you can do a text only post. Now I would say in general, to me, these are the least engaging. I think if you're gonna do one, you know, do a list, add emojis, make it a little bit more interesting that way. Um, this can work pretty well for a bulleted list. If you wanna give tips or, or you know, like three mindset hacks or whatever it is that you wanna share, um, they can work well. They're just usually not the best, but it's a popular content type. The second type is an image post. So this is where you basically you take a text post and you add an image in with it. And what LinkedIn says is that images tend images see a two times higher comment rate than just text posts. So if you, um, you know, if you want to get higher comments, higher engagement, include an image with that text post and it should perform better. Something else that's working really well right now at the time of this recording is an image collage, which is basically taking multiple photos and putting them in one post. So three to four that people can flip through and they can see multiple photos of you. Those tend to get good engagement. The third type is what are called document posts. So this is where, let's say you have a PDF, a workbook, an ebook. If you take that and upload it um, onto LinkedIn, those tend to get pretty darn good engagement right now. And in your workbook, I've got some examples for you of how to use documents and some more resources in there. And then the fourth and my favorite type of content and what my whole program was inspired by is video posts. So here's a couple of reasons why video is so great for LinkedIn. LinkedIn says, and this is according to their data, videos get five times more engagement than other types of content on their platform. And I will tell you the whole way I've built my businesses since I've been in business for myself um, for close to, gosh, five years now, uh, the number one thing that has worked the best has been simple thought leadership videos that I put out on social media, but especially LinkedIn, they get the best engagement um, that drive inbound leads and drive engagement. And here's another thing that I'd be thinking about right now if I were you is if you have not yet applied for LinkedIn Live, get on it because live video, according to LinkedIn right now, is getting 24 times the engagement of their regular content. And so LinkedIn Live, if you're not familiar, is just their live streaming feature, just like you can go live on Facebook or Instagram. LinkedIn now gives you the ability to do the same. However, you do have to apply for it and it can take a little while to get approved. So just Google how to apply for LinkedIn Live and you will find the link to do that on the LinkedIn website. Now, in terms of video best practices, and I wanna go a little bit deeper with you into video specifically for LinkedIn here. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the vast majority of all videos on social media today are watched with sound off. Think about it. Well, depending on when you're listening to this, people may still all be working from home or they may be back in the office. But when you are working in an office, think about it. Um, People are watching videos with the sound off. They don't want to disturb other people. So the majority of videos do not have sound on them. So if you want to get better engagement, use captions for your videos. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, and I've got a link in the workbook that shows you how to do it manually. But if you want to just get it done for you, which is the way I do it in my preference, I love a, um, a tool called Splashio. And uh, it actually does all of it for you in terms of the embedding, the captions, and the link for that. Let me actually get you the link for that. Uh, Splashio, one second. I thought I had it pulled up. Here we go, splashio.com slash Elise. If you use that link, splashio.com slash Elise, you will get four free videos where you can try using them to embed captions. And um, I use it every single week and I really like it. So I'm a big fan of that. 
In terms of the content of your videos, a lot of different ways you can do it, but one of the easiest ways to do it is simply to make a list of all the questions that your ideal client would have about your industry um, or about their business and start answering them for them one by one. For example, I did a, uh, an ebook recently on video marketing for those in the financial services field. It's specifically for, this is going to get a little, a little out there probably for most of us, but for what are called financial marketers or wholesalers. So these people sell to financial advisors. And one of the things that I just I had them think about in the ebook was what are all the questions a financial advisor would have that you could help them with? It's all related to growing their business, right? So how do I grow my practice? How do I reach new customers? How do I manage my time better? How do I find a great assistant? These are all relevant video topics for somebody in this position. And you can really just get into the head of who your ideal client has and what the most relevant questions um, that they, they have that you could help them answer and just start slowly but surely answering them one at a time in your video content. Now, in terms of LinkedIn Live, we, um, we did speak about this briefly, but I really do encourage you to apply for LinkedIn Live. One of the things that you will find with it, so I do a LinkedIn Live once a week on Wednesdays at 1130 Eastern, and um, definitely connect with me if you're not currently connected with me so you can join in on the live. Um, it does get better engagement. What I'm finding, just having done this for a while now, they definitely get better engagement than the, the pre-recorded videos that I do, which I do pre-recorded videos that upload on Wednesdays and, Fri uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, yes, to LinkedIn. So one of the things you'll want to keep in mind is as of right now, as of the time of this recording, which is end of March 2020, you have to use a third-party platform to stream to LinkedIn Live. So LinkedIn doesn't have the what's called native streaming ability, which is basically you log in and you can go live directly from their platform. You've got to use something third party. I've tried two different ones so far. And by far the one that I like the best is StreamYard. I think it's the easiest to use um, just from a functionality standpoint. So if you're trying to figure out which one works for you, you can definitely play around and LinkedIn has a whole list of their recommended third party streaming platforms. But StreamYard for me has been the most user friendly so far. So that's your, uh, that's your little section on content. And then in terms of engagement, let's talk about how you can really maximize engagement, grow your platform, and generate more inbound leads from your LinkedIn content. So a couple of things to keep in mind. When you are doing a post, if you add a link in specifically to that post, like for example, today I was recording some videos that we're going to be posting on LinkedIn and um, I put, I, I have a link that I want to direct people to, to sign up for a free discovery call. If we put that link in the body of the copy of the post, it wouldn't get seen as much. LinkedIn would actually repress the number of people who see it. So a, a tip you can use is you can either post it without the link first and then go back in and add it in, or you can add it into the comments, which is what we do. So we just say, hey, for the link for the call, look below in the comments. So in terms of your content mix, this is another question I get. What, you know, how, what percentage should be promotional versus what percentage should be uh, pure value add? I think you should always skew heavy on the value add. And that's why like for us on our team, we do so much content marketing, just trying to help and, and get, you know, messaging out there and serve people. And then there's always a percentage of people who really like it and want to get some customized help and support um, doing the things we talk about. I think in general, a one to three or a one to four ratio is reasonable for how often you're just doing value add. And then how often there's an ask in your video or in your content. So kind of think about what works for you. Um, but a good book on how to figure out your mix is a little bit of an oldie now, but a goodie. Um, Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk is a great one, I think is a solid resource to help you. Um, something else to think about is when you're posting your content, if you can, now I'm not good at this personally. Um, in fact, I don't think I ever do this. It's rare, but I know I would get better results if I did. Um, when you post receiving likes and comments in the first published hour are going to attract the most views. So what I mean by that is if you post something and then you just ghost, kind of like I talked about, I do a lot of times, I'll come back in later and respond to comments, but it's not usually right away. Um, you're not going to get as much, let's say, juice from the LinkedIn algorithm. If you can be available the first hour to respond to comments, 
to engage with people, that's actually going to trigger and show LinkedIn, oh, this content is valuable. People are engaging, people are interacting on it. So they'll show it to more people. So that's a great way that you can boost the number of views and the engagement that your content gets. Now, when you do engage, and this is a best practice for any sort of social platform, one of the, I think one of the helpful things you can do to keep the conversation going is ask another question. If somebody says, I loved this video, it gave me so much insight into my business, instead of just saying thanks, say, thanks, what in particular resonated most with you? What that does is two things. One, it helps you go deeper into a conversation with that person who very well could be your ideal client. And then two, it also triggers to LinkedIn because if you keep that dialogue going, again, that conversation is going to trigger LinkedIn. This is a really valuable post. People are talking about it. They're continuing to engage on it. So you can boost your engagement simply by asking a question in the comments instead of simply saying thanks or I appreciate it or whatever. Um, another thing to be thinking about, and this is starting to actually, this is the last tip I'll give you here in the, um, in the workshop is really thinking about looking at who are your frequent commenters, who are your generous commenters. So, I mean, people who actually take the time to write something that's well thought out, um, that's meaningful and connect with them, you know, take it into your direct messages talk with them, see what they're all about, who they are, set up a call with them. But there's a lot that you can do just by engaging with the people who are engaging on your content um, to help drive relationships and perhaps set up a business partnership you otherwise would not have had. So guys, that is about all we have time for today. I really, really hope this was valuable to you. Again, if you want to get the workbook that goes with this training, it's totally free. You can just go to elisearcher.com slash LinkedIn and get the free uh, LinkedIn workbook that goes along with this. And as always, um, hey, if there's anything I could do to help support you in the growth of your business or transitioning to more lead generation online, reach out and let me know. Would love to help support you in my magnetic video confidence and lead generation program. We've got a group coaching program going on and I've actually also recently created um, live virtual trainings for sales teams. So teams who need to learn how to master video and how to use video and social media to generate an inbound lead flow. I'm offering these virtual trainings now, like a half day workshop. So if you're curious about the training, just send me an email, elise at eliseArcher.com. Uh, we don't even have anything up on the website about it yet. So you'll just send me an email and we can connect about it. Um, I haven't shared it publicly until now. So uh, sh shoot me the email and we can connect about it there. Or if you are interested in the group coaching program, you can go to elisearcher.com slash magnetic and take a look at it and then apply if it feels like the right fit for you. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope it was of service to you. Remember everything that's happening right now, all the shifts, they are happening for you. And if we look at it as an opportunity to reimagine how we've done business, to maybe take things more online where they haven't been before, you can really thrive in this time and you can make this the best thing that ever happened. And so I hope today's training helped you to start to do that. And um, just know that I'm here for you. I'm cheering you on. I'm here to help support you and reach out anytime if there's a way I can be of service to you or your team. All right. Bye for now.